Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and our chats with Emily as we are calling our readings through the Johnson edition of all 1,775 poems. We turn now to poem 56, If I Should Cease to Bring a Rose. Now this poem, as we understand it, was sent in fact with a rose, something we've seen Emily do several times, uh, to a friend on, uh, uh, on her birthday. I'd like you to um, uh, notice the repetitions in this poem, especially of the word if. Now, our assumptions are that you, um, you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net. Down that left-hand side, our playlist is called Chats with Emily. I'm hopeful that you have already exposed yourself to the introductory set of comments, and I'm hopeful that you've already read the previous 55 poems we just finished with by Chivalry's is Tiny. Let's enjoy this, again, a brief poem. These are all very brief poems, um, as we're enjoying now the power of the word if. And of course, that takes us back to poem 54 with her use of the word if. If I should cease to bring a rose upon a festal day, t'will be because beyond the rose I've been called the way. If I should cease to take the names my buds commemorate, t'will be because death's finger clasps my murmuring lip. Now, I find this a fascinating little poem. In, in, the, in a simple line, of course, what she's saying is, if it, ever, if it ever happens that I don't recognize the importance of you in my life, uh, and of course, maybe sending a little gift like a rose, it won't be because I've forgotten you, it'll be because I've passed, I'm gone. Notice the speculation that stands behind if I should cease to bring a rose upon a festal day, right? Obviously the birthday, that would make sense given that she sent this on a friend's birthday. Twill be, notice the italicized words of beyond and deaths. Twill be because beyond the rose, I've been, and then her language, called away. It's, it's fun, right, to see the way Emily talks about, about death called away. I said, I had, a, I had a little thing I had to do, and that's why I, I, didn't, I didn't do it. And then she comes back again to balance the poem with the second if. If I should cease to take the names my buds commemorate. In other words, flowers have meaning, special meaning for her. This is Emily, of course, who loves gardening and loves flowers so much. T'will be because death's finger clasps my murmuring lip. By the way, Franklin will actually um, will, will have clasps and, and Johnson will, will use the word claps, my murmuring lip. By the way, Emily wrote in a brief fragment um, the following um, from about her childhood. She says uh, that of the things that she can't quite remember, memory drapes her lips. This is fragment 117. Uh, and, and of course it can play the game. By the way, the word murmuring we'll see in poem 161, murmuring thread. It's a, it's a powerful word. And the idea that uh, death's finger shuts the lips and uh, therefore she can't say anymore. And of course, she couldn't write either for that matter. Well, what are we gonna do with this one? I think the argument that she's making at 2A is that death is the only thing that can keep lovers or friends apart, right? Uh, to be, I love the repetition of if in this little poem, and as well the italicized words of beyond and death for emphasis. Think about the power in 3A, just to relate it to another title, of John Donne's Valediction for Bidding Morning. We've given uh, full lectures on the Dunn poem of Valediction, as well as Death Be Not Proud, the, the famous sonnet. In both of those, that defiant view about death, and yet the respectful view of death at the same time. And then finally in 3B, um, do you have a pal in your life that you would say you're as close as this, that the only thing that could ever keep you from wanting to be with them and sharing hellos with them would be your passing or their passing? Thank you.